By the way, this is fascinating. And you know what? I love the idea of him going into high schools and junior high schools. That, we can make that happen. I okay. can help you there. Excellent. I'll make some calls. Good. But there are so many kids in the schools who feel just like he did for so many years, and nobody knows it because kids, adults, all of us are capable of hiding things, as you did so eloquently for so many years. Um, so we'll try and make that happen. We'll, sure. We'll talk. Okay. Brian. Didn't call you Bruce. So do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, my nope. gosh. Here you are. I'm sorry. Hi, Brian. Uh, yeah, hi. A quick question. Um, Go. I work, with, I work with middle schoolers uh, that have severe, severe anxiety when it comes to schooling. What advice can you give teachers that will help them educate their kids and support them through those high anxiety days? What they need to do is they need to hear a voice. They need to see somebody that's been successful, that's been through the emotional, imaginary wars, and they need to hear all the tools in the toolbox that I use. I can't go over them now because we only have a certain amount of time, but you have to trust the fact, and I know I'm, I'm, they work. Um, I have the support of Bradley that they work, which makes me even happier. But those tools are very necessary, and I would be more than happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one or one-on-12, whatever it is, and go over those with you. Okay? I have a question, Brian, just to follow up to that. Would this book help people, teachers, um, help their students? If they got this book, read it, could they apply the tools in the toolbox to their kids? This book was written as a self-help book. On Amazon, you'll see it's in the self-help section. because, And, and it's funny because I... I didn't really write it that way. It kind of came out that way. I always thought the healing thought process was something that it should be known if you have anxiety and so on. But I have been, that question has been asked of me all the time, and I always say three words, read the book. And then after they read the book, they, they'll contact me and say, I, I get it now, I understand. It takes time. It's not something where, as we talked about, it's not a pill and a cure. One other thing, um, it would have been very easy for me to grab a couple of beers, drop a Xanax, stand up here. <laughs> and, and we kid about it, but I'm going to just say this to, to, to add to this. It's very important. If we don't deal with our kids this way, what they're going to do is that. They're going to go and they're going to pop the pill because our pharmaceutical companies are making their billion-dollar industry. So because of that, they're going to rely on that. They're going to rely on pills and alcohol. I didn't want to come up here and say, you know what, I'm going to have a couple beers. Because if I'm going to do talks all around the country and the world, I will be the number one speaker on agoraphobia and panic. I promise you that. And you can't do that and drink it because then you turn into a rock star. <laughs> well, at least you look like that. <laughs> Are there any other questions? I saw a hand over here somewhere right there. Yes, sir. It was 50% of it. It's called intense focus training. And it's a, it's a great point to, to bring up. It's called being comfortable in an, uncomfortable, in an uncomfortable situation. And I'm going to use you, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. Before, we came, before I came here tonight, which was why I was 10 minutes late, I got on a treadmill, and I got my heartbeat up to 180 beats per minute. And I spoke. And I gave the speech. By the way, it's not the same speech I gave, because this speech has changed 20 times already. But I spoke, but I was uncomfortable. That way, when I get to this position, I'm comfortable in that uncomfortable situation already. So with this situation, honestly, this was the first time. I don't want to keep saying honestly, because I'm not, there's no reason to lie. You're not a politician. No, no. But there's. This is, my, this, is, this is my IFT training. If you asked me 12 or 15 years ago, and I'm sure there's people in this room that will attest to this, if I would ever be standing here, number one, talking about myself, which is very hard for me to do, and number two, telling you about vulnerability, about weakness, about all the things I was afraid of in my life, I, forget it. But I've done it. I've made it. I've, I've done everything I needed to do 
it was, it was horrible. It was torment. It was a terrible, terrible time. But I came out, not only did I thrive, I survived. So I'm happy for that. And I'm going to pull up these two things right here. These are my two wonderful kids, and I bring these two when I have anxiety situations. One of them's right over there. And I, and I bring them up for a reason, because they've never seen their dad, other than misspell words and strike out in softball, fail. Because they, I was semi-retired by the time they were 12 years old. So I love the fact she's up there seeing her dad being nervous and fearful and seeing him use tools, knowing that it's OK. It is OK. Any other questions? Medication is necessary, and I, I, this is, I want to stay within my realm because I don't want to speak out of school, especially at the hospital here. <laughs> um, but medication in certain situations, I'm sure, is necessary because at a young age, if there's things going on in the household, sometimes their craniums are not built to handle those situations. And I really don't want to talk too much about that because that's out of my, that's out of my realm. Any other questions? I will answer anything. Right, yes. Yeah. Sure. In, in your experience, is the anxiety more biological or is it social learning? Is, I'm, so, is it, I'm sorry. Is it more biological, the anxiety, or is it more social and learning? Um, it's, it's kind of a two-part answer to that. It's one leads to the other. In other words, your, your mental state Obviously, we all know this. Whatever you think, you become. And you start out with social anxiety. You start out with um, you know, all kinds of anxieties. And I can just go on and on and on about the doubts and fears and so on and so forth. But it starts to affect your, your system. And I'll give you a perfect example is when we used to, be, we used to go on vacations. Um, I used to get sick before we'd go on vacations, physically sick. And it wasn't because I was getting a bug. I caused myself to get sick. I hope I'm answering your question correctly. But the mental part of the, the mental part of anxiety supersedes the physical part of the anxiety. That comes secondary. But boy, when it comes, it comes out of nowhere. It really does. <clears throat> yes? The only thing I know about medicinal is, uh, I'm a, I, I, you got to explain that to me. I'm sorry. I don't I know what that is. What she's saying is it's like medicine being up here speaking. This okay. is your. This is why I hire an author. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to college, so there's three, three syllable words you have to. <laughs> it's, it's a great question. Anything, and I'm going to prove something to you in a minute. I was going to wait to the end. This was my biggest fear used to be planes. Because I mean, think about everything I've talked about. Now I get on, I'm a level two. And all that talking I did, that positive self-talk, I do that on planes. I still do it to this day. But I go from level eight to a three to a two. So what you're, to answer your question is, I'm sure the more I do this, the more comfortable I'm going to get. But I'm never going to walk in and be at a level two as soon as I start. It's the same thing with a plane because it never leaves you. Anxiety and panic will never leave. Here's that tree, OK? This is the tree today, OK? And, but it's still there. You can't get rid of it. It's still there. Yes?
I'm I'm shaking my head. And first of all, I don't even know if that's a question. No, it's it, it's a great question. Great question, and thank you for having the guts to, to ask that question. Um, my levels are my levels, and first of all, yes. When I found out it was anxiety, it was at one o'clock in the morning from Lucinda Bissett, Midwest Center for Anxiety. You've heard of her, okay? Fantastic, wonderful. Okay, that's as far as I'll go there. My levels are my levels. For me, a level nine is absolute. A level ten, level nine is absolute panic when my heart is beating so fast that I am ready to fly. That is level nine. And what I did for you is I tried to give you my levels so you could see my by my maybe my movements, my posture, and you probably could see they didn't change much. They, because I'm so used to it that I'm able to control it and keep it at a level that you hopefully can't see. Maybe it's just a little bit of vibrato, whatever, in my voice, but you probably can't see. In your situation, I don't, I'm not necessarily agreeing with the, fl the fleeing. What I'm going to say is, if you're at a level four, maybe your level four could be my level eight, okay? Your level eight might be like my level four, whatever it might be. What we need to do, as you need to do, is realize that it's not a question of retreating. Retreating is a negative, OK? Using the tools, and I, I'm not trying to sell my book, but using the tools, not retreating, maybe standing still, and using the tools to take one more step, using the tools to take another step. It took me, when I was afraid to leave the, my home, years to get to a level of comfort. It really, really did, because once, in my head, everything was a nine. All those pictures, I was never afraid of tunnels and bridges, as I mentioned. I was afraid of the feelings of being in them and having the attacks while I was there, being in an office and having a panic attack, attack while I was with a customer. So it wasn't so much of claustrophobic. It was claustrophobic, it was fear of heights, it was this, it was that, but it was the feelings I had. So what you need to do is, you need to look at the whole healing thought process, process it and say, OK, and take one step at a time. But more importantly, don't talk bad to yourself. Don't talk to yourself the way you would never want somebody to talk to you. And that's very, very important. OK, it's, it's part of the healing process. There's no reason to talk to yourself bad. I failed today. I didn't do well today. I was up here, and I started to have bad thoughts, and I did this in that room back there. It doesn't go away, and it's, it, but it didn't take long for me to get up here. And once I got up here, I used my positive thoughts. I used my positive thinking, and I got through it. I almost had to go to Home Depot a couple of days to go and get more tools, because I thought of talking up here, but I was able to use my own. <laughs> yes? Thank you very much. What is the first thing we as a society want to do? We want the easy way out. And, and believe me, I can't make fun of this affliction because I've had it. So we always want the easy way out. Well, the easy way out is always medication. We all know that. That's the easy way out. One of the reasons I love dealing with Bradley, and I'm going to answer your question this way, is when I met with the doctors, that's the last resort with them. 
And I loved hearing that. It wasn't, we medicate, we medicate. And the doctor I spoke with, I don't think he's here today, but he was great. And he, that's the first thing we talked about was, unfortunately, we have to medicate. We've tried this, we've tried that, we try. And some people have it, and they have to be medicated. On the other hand, I'm sure there's a percentage, and I'm not even going to try and guess what it is. I'm sure there's a percentage of people that don't have to be medicated. They need to be informed. They need to understand that there's tools, and it's okay. People don't understand it's okay to be afraid and to have anxiety. This is, they need to know that it's anxiety. It's adrenal glands. It's, this is what it is. It's not some disease. Years ago, I prayed I had cancer of the adrenal glands. I prayed I had some disease that I could say, it's not that. It's not me. It's that. Thank God. Isn't that a, you, you were hoping you have a disease so that you can blame it on that. So in a roundabout way, what I'm saying is, yes, we do need, as a society, as, a, as people in the medical field, go into these places and, and figure out how to get them off the medication. It's a crutch. Some people do need it, but some people hopefully don't. Book, but I think we have one last question there. Yes, Larry. Um, I have a small company of about 50 people. What, what, can, what benefit can you give to the people in my company? So, you know, you're coming in and speaking to them about, about what you're going through. Great question. Um, and thank you for asking that. I recently, my very first talk was with the Rhode Island, I'm saying it wrong, Association of Rhode Island Executives, is that right, Nancy? Okay. Association of Rhode Island. And shame on me, I thought as a business owner, they wanted to talk, eh, anxiety, panic, I want to talk about business. So I set up all my bottles and I did all my things and I started to get a little bit more into the business, of course, the anxiety. And then when I was done, I raised my hand, and I'm answering your question. I raised my hand and Steve Porter will attest to this as well as Nancy, they were there. Six to eight hands went up and every single question was about panic and anxiety. Every single question. Some of them, it was very personal. So what I say to you with that is knowing my own company and people within my own business, can you imagine talking to people, if I go in and talk to those people, if you own a company or you're a manager and people are working for you, you don't know what they have. They're not going to show you vulnerability. They're not going to show you weakness. But if I go in and I go there and I talk to them and I can inspire, to, inspire them to go there, do this, they're going to look at me and say, here's this guy up here telling them that this very successful guy, and he did it. Damn it, I'm going to do it too. And that's going to make your company even more successful. And that's the part that I really want to help with because there are people, whether they're in here or they're in companies, that can do more. Some, they're just afraid to do it. They're comfortable. And being comfortable is okay. It's just some people want to do more and they can't. They're just afraid to do it. So it's important. I'm going to do one thing and then you can do your raffle. This is in my book. I'm going to do it now. It's very personal, personal to me. And It says, book launch 517, and the nail is in the wood. Thank you very much.